I'm going to go ahead and get my new pole rope that I'm actually building here. So I got one fourth inch rope and I went ahead and tied a double half hitch on itself on the bottom here and I'm going to try and use this as the space here to put my rope in as I wrap it around just to hold it in place and then wrap it real tight so I can get a real good pull on it. So this is one quarter inch rope. I tied it first so I can get my measurement that I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Now to cut it, what I did is I used duct tape. This is an old trick someone taught me and I can't remember where I learned it, but I learned this when I was quite young. When you cut rope, uh, especially with rope like this, it frays pretty bad. So I like to cover it with duct tape first, you know, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half here. I have my torch ready to go so I can just kind of seal it up, melt it down so it doesn't fray any, anything past that. But the tape kind of keeps it from going out of control. So I'm using my good old blade and knife here. And I'm cutting away from myself because I don't want that knife to stick in me. And there we go. So I just really cut through the duct tape. It's a little bit harder to cut through with that duct tape, but it's worth it to keep it together. Turn on my torch. I'll just give it a real quick light right in there. Now it's really hot to work with, so I'm going to cool that off. What I've done is I've actually wrapped the rope around the crankshaft. Our assembly is supposed to go inside and it has two plastic knobs that pull out when you pull the rope and they cause it to spin. I'm just going to use the outside of the crankshaft and spin it with this rope. Now what I need to do is turn on the gas so the fuel line is open and I need to put the choke all the way in and then I got to pull. Now I'm going to assume that it's not going to pull on the first or start on the first pull because you have to get gas go into the carburetor from here and it's been shut off. So that might be something. But this has been in the house, it has been warm. I got fresh oil in there, it might do it, I don't know. Um, what I also did is I hand spun this to where it was tight. If you get a good tight uh, on the crankshaft itself, then you might be able to do it. But that's what you wanna do is kind of move it to a tight position and then pull. All right, so as you can see, it's a really cruddy day. It's snow raining. My wife's got to go in the candle business today and the solar panels are low and she's going to be making a lot of candles. So I've got to get the power on. We now know it works. Make sure if you ever do this that you do not tie the rope to the crankshaft. I got a warning from a subscriber on that. Don't do it. it will, this thing spins the entire time. That crankshaft is moving, moving, moving. You tie to it, it's going to suck that rope in and it's going to do some major damage. You want to make sure you get that rope free and clear when you pull that thing to a start. It is also very dangerous, so once you get this thing started, you do not want to move it while it's running. Um, anything that touches that, it can get sucked in, it can cut you up. This is dangerous. It shouldn't be like this. But the only reason I'm starting it like this, you guys, is because I tried to buy a starter, uh, starter recoil assembly, and there is no parts out there that work on the machine. They say it works on the machine, but it does not fit it, and it does not work. So please be aware of that. If you're ordering on online on Amazon, if they sell you one part for the rigid 6800 um, G, that's what this one is, it will not work on this, this machine. So I just want you guys to be aware of that. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the pump house, get a nice safe spot, get it out of this weather, and then I'm gonna start it up there and uh, start powering up the house and my wife's candle business. Thanks for joining us at Living a Sustainable Dream. Um, being sustainable is sometimes you gotta start things um, <laughs> without the right equipment, but it can happen and because the parts out there aren't that great, you guys. Um, thanks, we'll see you next time.